Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to Live with Bluegrass Pride. Um, since the pandemic, we have been cooped up. We are trying to recreate those beautiful musical moments where we get to hear some wonderful sound, have some great conversation. Um, and our goal is to cre recreate the in-person in uh, musical experience. Um, this month, we're kicking off the year with Lily Henley. Uh, it's a double Lily interview. Um, and so I would like to spend no more time by myself. I'd like to welcome the Lily of the hour, Lily Henley. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I... I, I said earlier I was gonna do a short intro. I don't know if, if you were ready for that that quick. But. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm in the hallway of my house and where the internet is hopefully the strongest. And the the <laughs> theme of 2020 is my internet strong enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so true. It's like what makes or breaks all situations. But yeah. Right. But we're in a new year. And so, I hope it's kicked off well for you. Um. Yeah, so far, so good. It feels, I don't know, it, it feels the same, but also um, somebody said the other day that uh, the collective gathering of feeling of like that things are new and something's different does make, it makes you feel hopeful in a way that maybe you didn't like five days ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am on board with that feeling. Um, are you, is it getting the creative juices flowing? Are you writing? Are you, are you making beautiful new music? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about that maybe because I was watching, I watched like the last Bluegrass Pride um, live from Blue, Bluegrass Pride, which was really fun to watch. Um, and I thought, oh, that's a question that always gets asked is like, what have you been up to? And I do actually feel like, it's taken me a little bit, like I had a real, like early in the pandemic, I had a real like hump of just feeling very not not creative. And honestly, it just, when I'm not, when I don't feel creative, I just go with it. Like I'm, I'm not one of those people that feels really upset if I go through like a period of not feeling that way. But um, lately I have been feeling like very productive creatively, like work and a little bit with writing, but also, kind of I'm in that stage with a whole bunch of songs where things are like in their early like they're not quite finished because after you write something there's this long period where you're not totally comfortable with whatever you've written or whatever you're working on it just takes like performing it and playing it a lot and trying it on different instruments and maybe like learning a new technique that cause, <laughs> that you didn't do before and I'm in that stage and it feels really creative and fun yeah fresh fresh yeah 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 that's awesome i'm i'm looking forward to hearing you play today uh i i've been uh putting you into all of my playlists as it were and it's interesting how spiritual and uh powerful your music is and it's not i don't know i'm like I said, I'm really looking forward to hearing you play. And I think that the creative beginning to the year is a good way to start. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we should kick off some music. Sure. And we'll let you dazzle us for a bit and then I'll come back, we'll chat. All right. Cool. We'll have a good time. Now, wait, I can't remember. Do you disappear from the screen when I start playing? <laughs> I'm pretty certain I'm gonna disappear and then right. I'll be back. Okay, great. So I guess I'll, I might say something about this first piece. Um, I have um, right now, most of the music that exists of for me, at least, especially on like streaming platforms like Spotify is pretty old. Um, I have two brand new records that are like in the same stage of development and they're just about finished. Like they're, I, I would have put them out before now and had them done, um, except that it's really difficult. Um, with, when the pandemic happened, a lot of stuff got delayed. So um, 
One of them is a record of um, Sephardic music, which is uh, the music of uh, Sephardic Jewish people. Um, and it's all in Judeo-Spanish, which is a kind of ancient dialect of Spanish um, that's still spoken by, I think, about 200,000 people um, all over parts of the Middle East and the Mediterranean and um, in uh, Turkey. And um, it's like old Spanish mixed with bits of Hebrew, bits of Arabic, bits of Turkish. Um, and I wrote this record. Part of it is brand new songs that I did in collaboration with some really incredible uh, Ladino song specialists. And some of them are uh, brand new melodies for really old lyrics. And that's a tradition in um, Ladino song that um, Sephardic people have, there's been so many diasporas and these lyrics have existed for a long time and different melodies have been put to them, kind of like is true of American um, folk song and lots of other folk song traditions. And uh, I've just added some new melodies to that tradition. So this is a brand new song um, called Rosas y Salvias, and it's just a love song. <laughs> gears just a little bit 
uh, early in the pandemic, um, I mostly felt very kind of, um, I feel like there was, there was like a couple ways that musicians felt really when everything got canceled. And some people felt really, um, I mean, it was scary no matter what and stressful financially, but um, uh, there was sometimes like this feeling of, oh, finally time to get deep into creative stuff. But for me and for lots of people, I'm sure there was a real stress of having so many um, plans canceled. And I had a lot of things, a lot of um, CD releases and um, uh, stuff that was in the works, concerts, and it was really difficult and I felt really um, un unprepared for it and kind of like I didn't feel creative for a while, but sometime in April when things were extremely bad where I am, um, I live in Brooklyn and uh, in the first couple months of the pandemic in the States, it was just undescribable here. Um, and uh, we were inside all the time. And um, I, I actually did write this song that I feel really, I still feel really emotional when I play it. It's called New York. And um, it's, about, it's about remembering the time before the pandemic and um, thinking about the time after. When New York City was the place to be We stayed up all night drinking casually We couldn't make a living wage But the sidewalk was our stage and we were home When New York City was the place to be Every night endless options beckoned me Million things to try before the day was done. Now the world is turning, closing down a movie strip that we can't stop from turning round. Tell me, would you recognize me if you only saw my? When New York City was the place to be We never thought to walk so carefully When we'd buy coffee on the street We'd touch every friend we'd meet like we were home When New York City was the place to be We rode the subway city Knee to knee, and I had fear of missing out. And every time I conquered doubt, I thought I won. Now the world is closing, closing down. No more, be a strip that we can't stop from turning round. Tell me, would you recognize? Me if you only saw my eyes Ooh. Stoop again, cause New York City is our place And 
I'm just waiting for your face to reappear I'm just waiting for your face Waiting for your face to I swear it's <laughs> it's been what ten months since uh, we couldn't could no longer have live shows, and I still am just not used to playing to my own face. <laughs> it's just so weird, <laughs> and it just never feels normal. But um, I um, and for anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, if you stream a show, you literally are just looking at your own face on a screen and for a person who's really distractible like me it's like a whole level of confusion anyway this uh next song that i'm gonna do i'm gonna go back so um what happened to me i guess la well it was more than a more than a year ago but um i kickstarted my first full-length record um which i did end up recording in um at a really beautiful studio called Mason Jar Music in Brooklyn. And um, I kickstarted it. Uh, and right after that happened, um, I mean, during that period, you're just posting, posting, posting all the time. Um, and uh, I started posting a lot of these, these uh, Judeo Spanish songs, these Sephardic songs that I know. Um, and uh, I, just because I was like running out of things to post and you're just trying to remind people about your Kickstarter campaign. And so um, during that period, a lot of people wrote and, you know, they supported my full length record, which is a record of all original songs um, in English. And a lot of people said, oh, that's great, but it would be cool if you also made a record of this music. And I thought, okay, at some point, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just record it in my house or something. And right when the, um, the album in English funded, I got this email um, from a Judeo-Spanish Judeo record label in France saying that they'd like me to make a record um, of Sephardic music. So you don't say no to stuff like that. So last year I made two records, um, one after the other. And um, for me, the music feels connected. Um, so. Uh, I'll be putting those out really, really, I guess this year. I, I've been saying really early in the upcoming year, but now it is 2021. And um, so this next song that I'm going to do is from that uh, Judeo-Spanish record. And this is a really well-known song called Duermite Mi Alma, which uh, means sleep, my darling, and it's a lullaby. Uh, and it's a very kind of tongue-in-cheek lullaby. And the really popular part of the song says, um, sleep, my darling, sleep, my child, for your father is out with his new lover. And... Um, I uh, wrote this new melody for it because it just felt more personal to me to write my own melody. And I, right before I recorded it, I was with this great um, uh, folk song collector for um, Judeo-Spanish music. And I said, oh, I'm going to do this new version that I created of um, Duermite Mi Alma. And I just wanted her to look at the words that I'd chosen. And she said, oh, this is great. This is great. But you're missing half the song. Um, and it turns out uh, after she says, sleep, my darling, sleep, my child, your father's out with another woman. I followed them and I saw them um, having a meal together. There's a second half that says uh, he, the um, father comes home and says, um, open my darling, open my sweetheart. Uh, I've been out all day. I'm tired on the road. And she says, um, wherever you spent the day, you can spend the night. And then he says, um, a devil, d devil woman. Uh, who told you? And she says, demon of a man, I discovered it for myself. Um, and then she, and she locks her door with seven locks. So I think it's just a great story. And um, I love these, a lot of these songs have these beautiful um, female perspective stories that are kind of surprising because it's a very old song, like hundreds of years old in the lyrics. So here's my version of it, Duermite Mi Alma. Dormite mi alma, dormite mi vida 
que tu padre viene de donde mueva a mi gallo me fui a ver por ver donde iba y de que se iba de donde mueva a mi nuevo amor entre más adentro por ver lo que había y de Respuestas con ricas comidas, yo me fui a mi casa, triste y afligada. Yo cerré mis puertas con siete andravillas, muevo todo. Ábreme mi alma, ábreme mi vida, que vengo cansado de ronda la vida. Si vienes cansado, cansado de irías, donde pasa la noche, puedes pasar el día, muevo todo. Mujer del demonio, que el que lo diría, hombre del huerco, yo que yo veía, dormite mi alma, dormite mi vida, que tu padre viene, de donde mueva a mi nuevo It's a wonderful, uh, it's, it's clapping. It's, it's the audience that we're missing, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was wonderful, Lily. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as you can see, everyone, there's a Donate Now banner. Uh, please support Lily and uh, Blue, Bluegrass Pride by going to bluegrasspride.net slash showcase. Um, donations will be split, and um, there will also be an opportunity for you to donate on a regular basis to help support artists like Lily and others who have lost opportunities during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, fun, fun, fun. Uh, but let's chat. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> um, so, man, I started taking notes because <laughs> you bring a lot of culture and history to your music. Um, and that's such a beautiful blend. Um, can we talk a little bit about the Judeo Spanish? Sure. Yeah, yeah, actually. When Wait. do you, uh, I don't want to sound ignorant, but are you fluent in in that, or do you just write music in it? Did you grow up with it? <laughs> um, I grew up. I grew up with a lot of Judeo, like Sephardic. Sephardic is what um, 
the Jews who are, um, you know, we've had a lot of Jewish people have had a lot of different diasporas and there's so many different ways to be, you know, different, different kind of sub, I don't know, there's so many words, I don't know. I mean, I also am like, what word do I use? I like this term ethno-religion because it kind of covers the fact that um, Jewish people are both, there's both the religion and there's all these different kind of sub-ethnic that are connected because they're connected through um, through pr like a lot of shared practices and through spirituality and religion and through the Hebrew language, which is like the language that's shared across the board. But mm -hmm. Sephardic Jews are the Jews of the um, Iberian Peninsula diaspora. So after leaving the Middle East, going to Spain um, and uh, and then there's a diaspora from Spain. And that's actually when Judeo-Spanish became a thing. Before that, it was um, just the form of Spanish that Jews spoke in what is now Spain and Portugal um, and like North, Northern Morocco. And, um, and after this diaspora happened, after the Inquisition, um, it, it left that air, that period in Spanish itself changed a lot. Um, it, it like lost a lot of its Arabic words. And so there's a lot of kind of tasty things that are held in um, Ladino. And there's a few other, I'm, I'm not totally sure, but I think there's some other dialect dialects of Spanish that have some of that in them that um, like com like colloquial Spanish doesn't have. Uh, yeah. And I guess, it's nice to get to talk about this in the context of um, like bluegrass or, you know, why am I? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I grew up, I'm a fiddle player and I will yeah. play fiddle. And I grew up um, playing a lot of going to fiddle camp uh, with lots of great, great players my age and, um, and playing a ton of, of Celtic music and American old time music and stuff like that. And, um, but this is my cultural uh, music. This is so, um, and the way I feel about it is that, and I also write in English, obviously, and have like a lot of different influences, but I feel like we, it's, it's 2021. People are listening to music from all over the world. There's like so much crossing, like people being influenced. There's almost no way anymore to grow up so insular that you are and, never exposed and this is roots music also so when yeah. you know when i see um like roots festivals or you know i want to i want this you know this kind of music to be also represented and also mm -hmm. as a um as a jewish person to have non-eastern european jewish culture represented um and the, and the fact that it's very endangered and what i'm doing is really my kind of love letter to it trying to grow it and add to it and you know do something which i'm sure lots of whenever you do that there's people that will complain about it but it's Let them complain. i think yeah. it's a beautiful letter you know I, I you you so beautifully envelope your heart into you know building these songs i'm it's fascinating i guess i i understood it but i didn't understand just how layered each song really is to you. Um, yeah, and actually I didn't answer your question. I do understand <laughs> Ladino. I understand Ladino really well. Um, sure. I'm not completely fluent. I speak Spanish pretty well and Hebrew quite, you know, pretty quite well. And so with that language background, I'm able, but I'm doing a lot to, it's sort of like learning your, you know, learning a language that you, yeah. sh you should have been able to speak, but you can't. And so um, I do, I do speak it. I can, I can understand the songs that I'm singing, and I did grow up singing a lot of stuff, a lot of a lot of things in Ladino. Um, do you find that now that the pandemic is on, that we've like lost the ability to, to form complete sentences? <laughs> Luckily, I do this kind of stuff, so like, I'm like, um, <laughs> I'm in limbo. Yeah, it's funny. It's like getting you get really creative when you're in your own little bubble, but it's really different from getting to play a lot and have like a lot of um you know we we missed an entire summer of like festivals and fiddle camps and like don't i know it <laughs> <laughs> so um every time i have like a chance to really talk about music in like a more public forum i'm like wow i haven't done this in a long time yeah, so, yeah. so shall we play some more because 
I can talk to you all afternoon and the people are here to hear you play music. Totally, let's play. <laughs> all right, well, without further ado, let's welcome back Holly Henley. <laughs> All right. So um, this is a song. It actually feels really new. Um, it's the title track from um, my record that I wrote all in English, um, which is called Imperfect by Design. So this is a song called Imperfect by Design. And um, I usually do it if I perform it, I do it with my band, and um, this has given me, this pandemic has given me a chance to really work up some of these songs um, to perform solo, so that's what I'm gonna do. And this song really is about, um, it's coming from this place that I was in like a year ago, right around the same time at the new year where I decided that my new year's resolution was to be less of a perfectionist. Um, and just accept that, you know, everything's always a work in progress and that's kind of the joy of it all. So, um, yeah. If you're out there 
drop drop a line even if it's like something ridiculous because it's it's the um, replacement for like heckling and random comments from the audience and clapping and stuff that I miss. All right, um, I'm gonna do the only cover song of the concert. <laughs> And, um, oh, V that means a lot. Um, uh, this is my favorite song by the legendary songwriter Buffy St. Marie, who is an indigenous Canadian songwriter. Um, and uh, it's a song I wish I had written, but of course she wrote because she is a badass. And um, it's called little wheel spin and spin and um, it's pretty self-explanatory but it feels just ever more pertinent with each passing year so here it is So um, yeah, so maybe I'll I'll play one more by myself before we give a chat, and then I'm gonna. You should stay till the end because I have a special guest for the very last number, and I want to save it to the very end. So um, thanks so much. Thank you so much for those comments. It just helps you. It helps me anyway. Feel like I'm not singing into the void. 
um, <laughs> which is what this can feel like sometimes. Um, I'm a person that I really love the audience interaction and um, I love playing big shows, but I, my favorite concerts are house concerts just because you can have those interactions and kind of connect to people's, uh, connect to people's uh, whatever they're interested in and why they came out to hear you. So um, I'll do one more song in Judeo-Spanish. Part of my campaign to normalize listening to music that isn't in the language that you speak. Um, in a lot of other countries where people are people speak a lot of languages, it's not a big deal to hear a song in a different language. And uh, um, it shouldn't be because the music the music should tell tell you the, enough of the story and kind of communicate that. So hopefully that's what happens. This is a song called Alta Alta Va La Luna. Um, uh, the lyrics are from a really famous Judeo-Spanish song and it's very kind of unique to this perspective. Um, it's so uh, from, from a woman's perspective and she is um, talking about um, her, uh, her, how unlucky she is in love. Um, that her the love of her life has gone away on the sea and is never coming back. Um, and she asks her mom, what should I do? Ma mother, what should I do uh, if I'm so unlucky in love? And her mother says, oh, my darling daughter, if you are this unlucky, perhaps you should not have been born. Which <laughs> <laughs> sounds really depressing, but I think it's said in, in commiseration. So it's a beautiful, beautiful old song. And uh, the, the melody is a new melody that I created for it. Los pajaricos de los cielos Cantan debajo del árbol de flor Ahí se ha que sufren de la alta alta va la luna cuando empieza a amanecer y ya hermosa sin ventura no cae voy a nacer los mis ojos se de mirar tanto a la mar vapores vayan y vienen para mí letras no hay alta alta va la luna cuando empieza a amanecer
Oh man, just lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's like, there aren't the right words to describe how you're feeling, right? Yeah, that's me a lot. <laughs> Except when, yeah, there's music. Yeah, yeah that that's lovely. Um, someone said it's a haunting guitar and it's, it's more than haunting. I don't know. Haunting sometimes has negative connotations, but like it's the overwhelming feeling that you're full of, of whatever emotion you have, right? Because um, some haunts are good, right? <laughs> um, That's true, yeah. Yeah, I, I love this. Um, yeah, it, it, it does this, this music that the way that I go about writing these songs, it feels really like a literal version of reaching back in tradition, into tradition, into like something that I feel so culturally and emotionally attuned to. And I'm like bringing it towards me and putting, and that's kind of where it came from of just the, the amazing thing about Judeo-Spanish is that it's, if you speak Spanish, you can understand it. Mm -hmm. um, and and for, me, <laughs> yeah, for me to like, to be able to write new melodies for these songs was a way to help me feel as if I'd written them. Like, because of the, the feeling of the songs I feel close to, I, I pick, you know, and the, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and the like, the, to write the melody to it makes you feel almost as if it's your own song. So sometimes I write new melody, new words, but sometimes I'm just writing new melodies to these old, to these I old. Mean, Either way, they feel very much you. I don't. Is that a strange thing to say? I don't, it feels like I know what you were feeling when you were writing some of right. those. Yeah. And that's a good thing to know. That that's yeah. I mean, that's that's how <laughs> that's how I describe why it makes sense for me to sing in English, to sing the new songs I wrote in English, and also sing these songs, and also maybe play some tunes or something in my show because it all feels, I finally have found things that feel like myself, that feel like me as an artist. Um, after like really years, me, and a lot of people have this, I think if you're an artist that has never had the feeling that some of the music that you're playing doesn't feel totally authentic to you, if, if that's never happened to you, you're very lucky. <laughs> Definitely like for in development or getting to this place, there's been a lot of moments of being like that one song that I'm singing, just, I don't know why I'm singing that song. <laughs> I, I just can't find myself in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, cause like we're all like, as an artist, you're like always a student. So sometimes you, you know, you find yourself doing something and then a year later you, it all makes sense. Like finally. <laughs> so right. it all clicks. Yeah. Well, so let's, you're in Brooklyn right now. Yeah. yeah, that's where I've mostly lived. My partner and I both have family in North Carolina, so we like okay. the only thing that we've done so far is driving, taking this drive all the way down to North Carolina and back. That's, so. that's a pretty drive though, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty and also I learned how to I learned how to drive this year pretty like I ma I mastered driving. That was my big accomplishment for the year. So, so how long have you been in Brooklyn? I've been in Brooklyn, I think eight years. Okay. Say eight years, yeah. Okay. My family, uh, my dad's side is in Manhattan. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. And so like every once in a while, I'm like, oh, the city. Let's talk about the city. My my grandmother was born in Manhattan and, and raised her family in Queens. So it's like- Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. What part um, of- <laughs> Uh, Far Rockaway. Oh, that's where my grandfather was born. No way. For real. Yeah, he was. So I'm adopted and uh, my dad's family is Jewish. And so wow. that's my little uh, connection into your world. Kind of. uh, yeah, I actually, so I was playing, I'm really ADHD and so I like thoughts go through my head all the time when I'm playing. And I thought I didn't ask her if she, like I made an assumption as if I was a <laughs> Jewish person, which is not at all right. I so. mean, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. 
Wow. So 10 months in Brooklyn and I'm, ten I'm years. back or 10 years and then 10 months in quarantine in Brooklyn. Yeah. In quarantine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in one of the songs from earlier, you were speaking about uh, the streets were your stage and um, can you tell us a little bit about, obviously you said it's weird to play for your own face, but there are, there are people snuggled in their, in their houses watching you. They're all over. Um, what does it feel like to have an audience that for every show is further out instead of in, in the immediate section of, where, of, the, of the world that you're in? Hmm. I guess that's like the, I haven't thought about it that way, but it is a really nice feeling to be able to kind of, it makes this whole experience, um, it's like such a universal experience. It's like the most, I can't imagine ever going through something more universal than the pandemic and playing concerts during it is kind of a way of having a visceral connection to how universal that is. Yeah. You know that there's yeah. this isolation and it, it does feel kind of nice i have this weird empty room in my apartment because having a housemate right now is challenging and um uh it, it's kind of nice to bring people i mean i'm sure it doesn't sound as good in on the computer as it does <laughs> in the room, but there have been moments where i'm just sitting alone in the uh, on the floor in this room and i'm thinking it would be really nice to just share this moment this moment with with people rather than yeah, it is really nice. Yeah. yeah. I, it was one of the things that I loved and also disliked about the pandemic was so many concerts to go to. And I wanted to go to all of them. <laughs> I know, it's... Mm -hmm. And was it... Did it help you feel comfortable in the moments where you weren't feeling creative to see a your friends and other musicians around you moving through and maybe in a different phase of, of songwriting or performing? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely like to be really frank, it, it, it's been such an equalizer. So it's, it's definitely like put, put everybody kind of on, I mean, some people have larger followings, you know, at, at the beginning of the pandemic, but yeah. it's put us all kind of on the same platform of trying to put our music out in the same kind of ways. And it's been really beautiful. Like it's really helped me kind of go in internally into the process and ask myself a lot of really deep questions about what, what it really means to share art with people or with, you know, and what it means to connect to it inside of yourself so that you're not so yeah, it, it definitely, I don't know if I, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. um, so I know you have a special guest coming up. Um, I'm very excited because I know that you share um, love. And so that's always exciting to uh, share music and love in the same moment. Um, but I think that we should finish out the show. Audience, please don't forget to tip the artist and uh, help Bluegrass Pride support yeah. musicians all over. Um, but without further ado, we want to close out the show with Lily and her special guest. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to Lillian. Lil it's so nice to have another Lily to meet another one and um, to Justin and Kara for helping make this happen and just all the work that Blue Bluegrass Pride does. Um, it's such an important, such an important organization and just really wonderful to have something so inclusive um, and support the work that they're doing to help um, LGBTQ plus artists. Um, my special guest is my partner, my as of April, my fiance. Um, we live in this crazy little place together. And um, I thought of doing this whole show just totally solo, um, just to kind of challenge myself that way, because I don't, ha I don't do a lot of really completely solo shows. But 
it was too much of a too much of a temptation to be able to jam a few tunes. I'm a little worried I'm gonna hit this door. So um this is Duncan Wickle and uh. and uh And um, yeah, don't know what else to say. Thanks so much for being here and for uh, supporting independent music and, and supporting Bluegrass Pride. And uh, feel free to follow me, especially on like, unfortunately, um, especially on Instagram uh, or my Facebook artist page. Um, and um, yeah, just send me a message, send me a DM, say hi. And. Uh, how you're doing. This is a set of tunes that I wrote and a song um, with uh, some Judeo-Spanish uh, words from a song called um, Abre tu puerta cerrada, which means open your closed door.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Lily. This has been a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, be sure to help support Bluegrass Pride by going to bluegrasspride.net slash showcase. Um, we want to help Lily and other artists because music makes the world go round. It's very important. Um, please uh, join us next month for Uma and Giri Peters. Um, more information will be coming up soon. So thank you again, Lily, for joining us. This has been a really good time. I can't wait to jam with you in real life. Yeah, <laughs> <definitely>. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next month.